Well, hello there, and welcome back. <laughs> Isn't that what I used to do? I don't know. <laughs> it has been quite some time since I made a video where I decided to actually speak in regular time and not do a high-speed transformation where I take hours of work that I put into a makeup look and make it look like it only took a minute to happen. So, you know, figure I'd change it up a little bit and actually speak. I like those videos though because they're a little easier to get away with with two kids or running around while I'm trying to make a video. Cause I can cram all that together, cut out the interruptions from the children and make it look, you know, kind of, kind of smooth and put together. But in real life, I have to stop like 3,000 times to like change diapers or feed children or fix boo-boos or, you know, other mom type activities. Now people keep telling me, they're like, you really need to, you really need to do YouTube. You really need to get into doing videos. And I'm like, oh no, <laughs> it's just a little more difficult. I had kind of put videos on the back burner bit uh, because you know you see other youtubers and you see other people doing videos and they have such a professional appearance you know like they've got nice backdrops and they're well put together and really they just look like they have their life together I thought to myself I'm like well obviously you know to be a successful youtuber you got to look like you have your life together but also me is like, you got two kids and you know your life ain't together. So if you waiting for that moment, like you are never gonna make any videos. You know, my little boys put the mama in Phenomena Mama. That name is significant because I do all that I do on top of trying to be the best mom I can be. Like my presence is not gonna be the same as every other YouTuber where I look like I have my life put together. Like I'm probably gonna get interrupted. Probably gonna hear babies being babies. You might even see a baby head or two pop up in my videos. But I just said, F it. <laughs> like, I'm going to make videos. I'm going to do what I wanna do and not act like my life is something that it isn't. <laughs> We're just gonna push through. We're gonna see what happens. We're gonna just roll with it. I figured a really good place to start would be something that I get asked a lot about, which are about my eyebrows. And I guess that's because when I do them, they look halfway presentable, which is flattering. Thank you. <laughs> because especially right now, I figured this was a good time to try to do an eyebrow look. Like, cause you see, like I have no makeup on and uh, we see how these look. Like, I don't know what the space is here. Like this is an eyebrow island. I don't. I am old enough to have gone through that phase where it was the thing to over tweeze, over plug, and have those thin eyebrow slivers. <laughs> so this is probably the consequences of that. So this is what I have to work with. This is just how I do it. It's not necessarily the right way. I don't really think there is a right way to do anything. If stuff that I do works for you, awesome. If it doesn't, look around. Find something that makes sense to you. Find something that you vibe with, with how you feel about your eyebrows or what you want to do. I like a more bold eyebrow. Like I take advantage of, you know, what I have up here to work with. I do just enough of a fade into a more bold eyebrow. You know, my hair's a little bit darker and I love the way a bolder eyebrow really frames my face. First, I'm gonna go over the products that are involved in <laughs> recreating what would be <laughs> functional eyebrows. I do my eyebrows first. That's my first step in my makeup process. I like to do my eyebrows first because that just like sets everything with them. They're good. And then that way, any concealer that I use, more so under and kind of beside, I can kind of blend it out and then go in afterwards with my foundation and blend that back in and kind of make the eyebrows fit into the rest of my face. Brush that I use, it is a little dirty because I've been using it. Um, I actually use this NYX, like it's actually like, you know, the liner. Rush has a spoolie on the end. First product that I use is the e.l.f. 
the locket liner in shade medium right <gasps> no it's shade light brown just kidding i obviously don't read the bottom very often so obviously my hair is not light brown but what i like to do is i go in with this first and kind of draw the whole eyebrow and then i go in and i set it with a darker shade like it's not just a solid nike check of color <laughs> we had a little bit of dimension after i go in with this and i have kind of like a solid a layer of eyebrow i actually go in with <laughs> Surprise again, it's still Elf, and this is so dirty, don't judge me. If you see my really extra all over body paint looks like this is the artist I am, like, oh, it gets everywhere. Like this palette looks like poopy because children, my kids get into everything. Like, why are y'all like this? It's the Needed Nude palette, and it's kind of a mess because I don't use any of this, and my kids find it and throw it around and whatever. I literally use this whole palette, which was like 10 bucks or so, for that dark brown shade. And that's the shade that I go in and I set it. Like I set what I've done. You wanna find a shade in a palette you already have that's just like a dark brown eyeshadow. That works too. And then my concealer of choice is the Sephora Bright Future. I use shade 03. I know, focusing on that. Fondant. Is it upside down? I'm really good at these videos since I do them so often. <laughs> this is about as close as you need to get into my face. So we're gonna start, you see it already? <laughs> we're gonna start again with the, I can't see what I'm doing cause my hand's in my face with the elf lock liner. Should I zoom in more? That's fine. That's enough. I mean, let's not feature my giant forehead. I'll, I brush the hairs up a little bit. I am actually gonna start under my eyebrows is the first step that I do. So I like the little flicks upward. I'll obviously like smooth them down a little bit. They make my eyebrows mine. You can trim those if you want. Like you can square off your eyebrows a little more if you want to round them or whatever you're into. Don't judge me on like, you know, if you tweeze your eyebrows cool, I'll just pray and have faith in the Sephora concealer in hopes that it will hide those because I I've mentioned I have two kids, right? Like who has time to twist these suckers? I actually start where this gap happens, where it kind of just juts upward and I start filling in there and just kind of follow along with this line that's happening anyway and give a more evenness to my eyebrow. All right, so we got a little bit of product and we're gonna start here. And if you see, like I said, I'm not going full product into this part of my eyebrow. I'm gonna keep it back here. And then I might start to bring the line a little bit forward. Obviously I use the most of my product under here. I'm gonna start kind of just blending it upward. You don't have to perfect your eyebrows immediately because when we go in with the concealer step, we're gonna carve them out a little bit and really define that shape that we want. You're like, it's super pretty, right? It's, it's pretty? Yeah. Is mommy pretty? Yeah. Thank you. Kind of build upward and give myself more of an arch than I naturally have. Like there's two ways I do this. The excess product, I can either take that and I can fade it. I'll just do the brush like this and I fade it upward how I want to kind of give it the more natural effects. If you're in more like a defined, really shape the eyebrow kind of move, sometimes I'll get more product and kind of do like the line I did down here, I'll do the line up here. Kind of leave it like that with kind of like a more natural it's a dark fade but it's still kind of a fade there into the color um or i'll go in and i'll create kind of a line here to give it more of a blocky type of fade just depending on what kind of mood i'm in if you feel like you have too much product or whatever brush it out the best way that i found to put eyebrows on is like use your best resting bitch face so that way you can see kind of how they set you're not always constantly making emotions i always just relax my face and draw my eyebrows to that. All right, so I go from wherever my arch is and just downward line from my arch. I'm gonna go here, kind of fill that in in a way that makes sense. And you're probably looking at this like, oh yeah, hmm, eyebrow tutorial, okay. Half face, trust the process. Compare both. We're off to a better start of having an eyebrow, kind of. I am going to go ahead and do the other eyebrow and then reappear. So now that we've got them somewhat matching, somewhat, we're gonna go in with our setting powder, our darkest shade in the, what I'm using, the e.l.f. Need It Nude palette. This is where we're gonna go in with that darker shade and fill that in. 
This is another opportunity to fade if you're doing some kind of fade up here. All right, so you can kind of see at least the consistency of the eyebrow we've corrected versus over here. I'm going to disappear again, do the other eyebrow and reappear. Here we have the closer to eyebrows version of eyebrows. One item that I use that is not mentioned before is what I use for my concealer and that is this smudge brush. It looks like that. <laughs> So beautiful, thank you. I'm gonna take my concealer and just yeah, right under there. I don't do it right up under it because I like to have control of like how hard that line is and the ability to use lesser product. So I'll just kind of dip it in there and then I go under. Like I said, just kind of carve it out and then just even it out. Kind of pushing the product upward into the eyebrow a little bit. What's nice too is like the shape is kind of up to you as well. Like if you want more of an arch this way, you can carve it more into the eyebrow or if you want to cut the tail off a little higher, you can go either slope it more down or you just slope it straight across and kind of just blend out and like hide the product you already applied, you know. Anything excess here, I just fade downward and blend it out. I'll start at the bottom and just fade some more. Kind of, you know how we started over here? in front of that and into that area, I'll kind of fade upward into my eyebrow. Kind of more of a natural kind of vibe up here and then it fades into like a harder type of line. And then anything excess over here, I will literally just kind of pull down and fade out with that concealer. Some people will go over up here and just really harden out and carve out that eyebrow here and down here. I really don't do much above here. If my everyday, like my go-to look, all I do is I shape that tail, me. And then again, I'm not putting it right by the eyebrow. Bring that product into the eyebrow. Dip the brush and then bring it in. And I just kind of go back and forth, kind of shape and then blend out any of the rest of that color that I've dragged down. They are not perfect. For the sake of having eyebrows compared to what we started with, we'll take it. I'm gonna finish my face and show you how my eyebrows look with everything done. I'm gonna do that cool snap thing I used to do that I thought was super cool. I still think it's super cool. And there we have it, a whole face. Yeah, face. Yeah, face. Looks like a nose, a hair, a hair, and face. Thank you, Chase. As you can see though, this is what we end up with, with our eyebrows. If you like what you saw, subscribe and stay tuned cause I'm really gonna try my hardest to be consistent and keep up with my videos, okay? We'll see you next time.